to license it. Meep, meep. Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Matchbox Makeovers. I'm Andrew and on the bench today is a Siku brand BMW Z3 1.9 Cabriolet. And you know what? There's not too much wrong with this one. The red paint job is in pretty good shape. It's a good roller. The axles are straight. No chips, no scratches. But I'm going to do my very best to turn it into something that looks like this. My former ride, which was a 1998 Z3 1.9 seen here in Slovenia with the Dolomite Mountains in northern Italy in the background. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you will and get all subbed up and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the Free the Ferraris build off from the JDC Invitational for his girlfriend's birthday and on Canada Day, an all Canadian diecast build off in red and white colors. Gotta have a Canadian passport to be involved in that one, but it'll be fun for everybody to watch, I'm sure. I've had three BMWs in my day since living in Europe. The first two were little 318s sedans and the Z3 that I showed you a picture of was my third one and really the most fun to drive, especially in this area where I am. I'm fortunate to have the Swiss Alps and the mountain passes and the German Autobahn right around the corner and across the Rhine River. It's a driver's paradise. And Germany, well, think about it, Mercedes, Audi, Volkswagen, BMW, Porsche, it's a car mecca. And they're very easy to come by a top quality used car over here. <laughs> Mine are never new, but I have the advantage of being able to shop around and pick up a, a great bargain when I see one. I drove that little car for about three years and had some terrific road trips. The BMW Z3, or Z3 if you're American, is a range of two-seater sports cars which was produced from 1995 to 2002. The body styles of the range were two-door roadsters called the E36-7 and a two-door coupe, the E36 and 38. The Z3 was based on the E36-3 series platform while using the rear semi-trailing arm suspension design of the older E33 series. It's the first mass-produced Z-series car, and the M models were powered by the S50, S52, or S54 straight-six engine, depending on the country and the model year. The Z3Ms came with a five-speed manual transmission. Mine was not the M series, which is the super souped up version, but it did come with an M Sport interior trim package. It looked the business. Production ended on June 28, 2002, with the Z3 line being replaced by the E85 Z4. And you know what? I'm partial to the look of the Z3. Development on the Roadster began in 1991 and was run by a group of BMW engineers outside of work in their own time. The Z3 Coupe shares the same platform and parts with the Roadster but features a chassis stiffening hatch area, making it a much tighter ride in comparison. The Z3 Coupe was unveiled at the 1997 Frankfurt Motor Show and the Z3 was the first BMW model to be solely manufactured outside of Germany, being produced in Greer, South Carolina. Interesting. Roadster models entered production in September 1995, powered by four-cylinder engines. Six-cylinder motors were later introduced in 1996. 
and a removable hardtop roof was available as an optional accessory. Coupe models entered production in September 1998. Did you know that this was a Bond car? GoldenEye was the movie, and John Cleese, as Q was showing James Bond his new ride, it was Atlantic blue with a tan interior. Did you also know that the actor Piers Brosnan didn't know how to drive a stick shift and had to get pushed or towed? <laughs> really? James Bond? Sadly, it's true. I'm using the scraping technique again here today, especially on the very minute front grill. I could never paint that accurately, and so that's a technique that I employ from time to time. Printed out a couple of pictures of my own car and other uh, late 90s Z3s to get an accurate perspective on the lights and the tail lights and the trim really trying to make it look as close as possible to my own. I did this uh, oh, a couple months ago with a Ford Capri. That was my very first car and it's extra fun when you do a restoration of something that you used to drive. So i am got some high hopes that this will turn out the way I want. I'm going to do a wheel swap. Those are the ones that came with this. Sadly, they are not the Siku wheels, which are usually really nice. And I have a set of four of them right there in that picture, but they turned out to be a little bit too wide for this particular car. So I had to go digging a little deeper, and I found a set that's going to require some axle tubes. So here I'm doing a dry fit, and this is the the set that I came up with, which is very close to the real ones that I had on my car. All the paint is cured and the decals are dry and it's now time to reassemble everything and you'll notice these three posts that first the windshield clicks onto and now the dashboard assembly goes on there and finally, I'm going to have to take this one-piece, two-seat sport interior and find room for that as well. But no worries, it all goes in there just the way it should. I have a look around for an accurate fit. And now the detailed chassis with my channel logo goes on as the final step in the assembly. Number 98 is all finished. Let's have a closer look. The blue metallic paint job is true to my 1998 model, as is the black interior and tonneau cover with a blue dash and steering wheel. I put my vanity plates on the front. There's the wheel swap. You can see it's still a nice roller. From front to back, I think I did a pretty good replica. As I said earlier, there was not much wrong with it in its original state except lacking a lot of detail, which I've tried to give some attention to in mine. And I think it turned out very well. You can see it from all angles here, top to bottom and front to back, and a couple of shots in the garage diorama. And I'll post these pics on my Instagram page as well. <laughs> there I am again in the real McCoy. Well, I hope this will make a, a fun toy for a little boy or girl. It's going to make its way back to the Goodwill shop where it started out. And I want to thank you for visiting today. Come on back anytime, and often, it's coffee time.